where we left off, we have Atlas sparring head to head with a corrupted yard. We have a dark, dark, corrupted frost standing across from our friends, our, our allies, Ezreal and Kristoff. Behind Frost is the dark and evil elf that has plagued our boys and all of Goron. And crew, the way we're going to handle this is we're going to let Atlas go head to head with Yark, since with combat time, that's going to kind of add up first before anything else can take place for you all. Does that make sense? Excellent. So, Devin. Yes. Atlas, if you will do me the honor and roll initiative. Oh, jeez. It all comes down to this. Oh, my God. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do this. Uh, I got a 22. We'll, we'll say you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, so he's he's currently advancing on me, correct? That's where we left off. You guys are. You guys are. Been fighting. Let me let me give you a quick quick painting. You guys are literally face to face. And if you remember, Yarg is corrupted. He, he's like, um, he's in full armor essentially. You can barely see his face. Um, and he's got uh. A mace in one hand, or a morning star in one hand, and then he's got a spade in his off hand. But he is like full on decked, and you guys are trading blows essentially. So you're right there in front of him. What do you want to do? Okay, okay so as he's coming at me, uh, I'm at wherever we've been fighting back and forth for a bit. I mean, I'm just mm-hmm. gonna, if I'm not already have you know known this, I'm in rage mode at this point. Um, and I'm going to just simply, I, this is not the Yarg that I know, and I know, I'm aware of that. Uh, he, he's just a husk for whatever evil resides. And so my goal is to just hopefully end this monstrosity's existence. So I will attempt Sounds to attack. Good. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So remember, just roll all your attacks at once. Yeah, so 18 for the first and uh, 17 for the second. For okay. Those both um, attacks. Yeah. So both of those are gonna miss. Um, so you run up to, or you're like already in the throes of combat, and he just parries your attack. So the first attack comes down strong, and he brings up that morning star, and you kind of like watch as the ground cracks beneath him as you strike down, and then you strike again, and he brings up that spade that like you can tell was one of one that you crafted that has now been, like, corrupted and, like, uh, almost refined by this necrotic energy. But he's able to, like, deflect your attack, and and your axe actually sinks into the ground, and you, like, watch this, like, crack spider through the right side of the bridge that you're on. Um, And then, of course, you have your lightning, right, that he has to do a dex save against? Uh, No, so I used used, uh, rage this... this, I guess if I'm already in it... Yeah, if we assume I already had it, then, yeah, I would use lightning, but for this first turn... doesn't it... So the first turn you go rage, it's still oh, it does automatically, the first right? Yeah, then a pre- yeah see, look, I'm giving you well, things. Well, I didn't know if I was already yeah, in this, rage or if I just went into rage. Is, I'm, I'm going to say you just went into rage. Just cool, cool, cool. So he's just going to beat a 13. He takes half damage. Uh, Yeah, he beats that, so he's going to take half that. <laughs> he takes one. But, he takes a good old one. Okay. Um, so basically, just your raw energy blasts forward and he takes this lightning damage. Um. And so it's his turn, and so he's about to just, you know, lay the heat, as as one does. Uh, and we're just gonna do three quick rolls. Um, oh. Two of those hits, I think. Um, 20 and a 23. Yep. Okay. So, um, you're gonna take just a little bit of damage. You're going to take uh, eight slashing damage, 
and five necrotic damage on top of five slashing damage and five necrotic damage. So he like swings around with this morning star that he's got and you're able to like step backwards, but you don't see the spade coming in. He just hammers you with two quick strikes from that spade. And each hit that hits while you're resistant to these like um, normal attacks, right? It's that necrotic energy that just bleeds over and you just pours through. And it is uh, your turn. Okay, I'm just going to swing again. Uh, I got a 24 and a 26 on this next attack. Oh, yeah, both of those connect. Okay, cool. Uh, D12. What is your AC? Just on it. 16. Uh, and tell me again the surroundings of oh, the environment. You're on a 10 foot wide bridge, and it's just you and him. And on the opposite side is like the archway into the room that they headed into to get okay. towards the final set of doors. I'm going, we're on a bridge. Yep. Wonderful. Um, I, I, I don't know if the damage matters, I'll tell you that in a second. What I'd like to do <laughs> is when I attack him, I'm going to use a. Um, a special move, pushing attack that I have with my, when I leveled up, uh, commander is what I took on mm-hmm. for the fighting style. When I hit, uh, use a die, add that to my total damage, and then I can push him up to 15 feet away. Uh, he's got to do, but he's got to do a DC save 16. So if he doesn't get a 16, I can push him up to what 15 feet away. What kind of save is it? You said DC. Uh, shoot, I don't know. Let me look that again. I got it right here. Probably strength. And this is fighter. Is that what you said, commander? Uh, correct. So other special. Oh, here it is. Pushing attack. It's a strength saving throw. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, he beats that. Okay. So otherwise, uh, I'm gonna do the six. I do sixteen damage to, for the attack. Um, plus a three extra. So like tw- it's twenty damage. Gotcha. Uh, so. Here's the thing. Each time you hit him, he quickly hits you back with the spade. And you're going to take 16 bludgeoning damage. No, slashing damage. And you're going to take 6 necrotic damage. All right. And then he needs to save for... Oh, did you use your bonus action on lightning? or? Oh, uh, yes. I'm going to use that now. So again, he just got to beat that save of a 13. Uh, he does not. He takes full damage of whatever your roll is. <laughs> he takes two damage. He takes two damage. Real good. All right. So he's going to, uh, so bring it back in the narrative. You swing this ax down hard and he brings up both weapons to block that first attack. And he kind of like watch him sink further into this. And you can tell just the weight of your attack just was physically draining on him. And as he's recovering, you just bring it back up and strike down again. You actually kind of like watch chips of his weapons fly as you like just hammer in on the same spot. Um, And you're not able to like shove him backwards like you were hoping. But at the end of the day, like you can tell you just put a lot of pressure on your former teacher. Um, He was able to, as he was like recovering, strike you back with that spade a few times, um, one for each attack. And now it's over to his turn. Uh, um, so you see that he kind of like um, slides that spade down to his belt and then puts both hands on that morning star and he swings. And you're able to like do the limbo kind of situation back up and you can like feel the weight of that attack. It's almost like gravity itself was bending to his attack. Uh, I would like to use a reaction. I have repost as one of mine as well. Uh, so when he misses with a melee attack, I can use my reaction to expend one superiority die and make a melee weapon attack against him. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 16 plus a whole lot. 16 um, plus 23, 24, 5, 6, 7, it 28. I mean, okay. it hits. <laughs> Plus a whole lot. That's that's a that's. In fact, if you guys want to know what a whole lot is, it's just like seventeen points. Like, it's a lot. It's a whole lot. Um, uh, yeah, they have a number do thirteen damage with that. <laughs> Got him. Uh, all right, cool. Your turn. 
All right, I'm gonna attack again. So uh, I rolled a 27 and a 24, which I realize those are gonna attack now. Yeah, those are gonna hit. <sighs> Not great on damage. Uh, that's gonna be six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 17. Um, plus lightning damage if he wants. So 17 natural, and then if he wants to roll to see if he gets that lightning damage. I'm just hacking and slashing. We're just gonna go, we're going toe to toe back and yeah, forth. Yeah, I mean, it is blow for blow. Um, he takes half of what was the lightning damage. That gummit, he takes, it's it's two, he takes one again. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, you're still chipping away at him for sure. Um, being two big brawly, uh, brawly boys. So you come across with your axe, just a left and right, and you kind of notice he doesn't even block these. You just take big chunks out of his midsection, just like you're tearing away at his armor, and he just doesn't even care. He pulls that spade and just backhands you with it across the face, and then comes back around and hits you again, and you're gonna take 22 bludgeoning damage and 20 necrotic damage. Hmm. Is there anything else you wanna do on your turn? (laughs) Nope. Okay. How are you doing over there, bud? Wait, so he wait, he he attacked, and now he's going again. I'm confused. So yeah, the, yeah. So so every time you hit him with an attack, he's hitting you with his spade. Yeah, he's hitting like, you with his offhand. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Cool. Who's bringing down another flurry of blows on you, bud? Um. As Dwayne rolls dice for twenty yeah. <laughs> straight minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I should have got more dice. I, sh- I knew it was coming. Um, all right, so he's going to just that flurry of blows on you. So you, he takes that morning star and catches you straight in the chest. And that spade will literally just two face taps, quick face taps, like kind of like you would chide a small child. Just bop, bop. shut up. Yeah, and you're gonna take. Uh, we don't hear. You're gonna take. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, I said bludgeoning for the spade, it's slashing, but um, you're going to take 12 bludgeoning damage, 4 necrotic damage for the morning star, and then for the spade attacks, you're going to take 12 slashing damage and 4 necrotic damage. Cool. (laughs) Yeah, buddy, your turn. (laughs) You'll go. And uh, pass turn. Uh, All right, so... um... (sighs) Already? Uh... Gosh, I'm going to use second wind as a bonus action. Okay. D10 plus three on, on the heels. Plus three. That's a total of seven. Heal back. Okay. <sighs> I'm going to attack him. Take it on second. <laughs> okay. All right. Roll um, two more attacks. Right? Yeah, yeah so let me go. Plus... It's like 28. Okay, so I'm adding plus 14, by the way. This, so yeah, that no, is... it's fine. There's, there's, oh, okay. Well, he didn't do super hot on That's a 24 as well. Okay, yeah, you hit both. Uh, okay, cool. Oh, what? Minimum dice all the way. Uh, and that's going to be a 28 damage. Whoa, that's a lot of damage. He, he... That's a lot so... of damage. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you... <laughs> You're able to kind of catch him off guard, and you take a big chunk out of him, swiping upwards and then swiping right back down. So like vertical up, vertical down, and you watch as like this black blood is sprays everywhere, and you kind of see him stagger back. But he's still able to like move forward and hit you with that spade just once. I gotta take three bludgeoning and one necrotic damage. It's all minimum dice. Uh, but, and, and I would like to also do a fr- like a free speech like talk right here. Sure. Yeah, you do that. When are you going to end this? You know I was always better than you. <laughs> Insolent whelp! And then he's going to attack. Because it's his turn. Uh, yeah, that's, that's going to hit. I just want to say that um, Bruiser Boys and Insolent Whelp are both two tracks off my yeah. DP. Um, on my tunes. <laughs> okay, so he, um, he kind of drops that spade to his side again. And he swings with that morning star, and it connects this time. And you feel the weight that he was intending to bring the first time. And you're going to take 20 bludgeoning damage 
and 24 necrotic damage. Okay. How you feeling, bud? <laughs> Just doing all the subtractions over here. Yep. Your healer's in the other room. Your turn. <laughs> All right, well, I have to do this a little bit. I, yeah, I, right. <laughs> I go, uh, can I go get my friends real quick and come back? Will you stay here for just a, mo- a moment? Uh, okay. Devin, where are you at in that HP pool, bud? You, you want to know numbers? Or you just want to know, like, yeah, I, I literally want to know numbers. 41! Oh, okay, cool. Oh, a good start. Um, if it helps, you're ahead of him. Ooh. Finish the fight! I am. Finish him. I look at him and I say, I would always sacrifice myself for everyone. And I know how close we are to finishing this thing. So if I gotta go, so that you gotta go, so that that evil wench you have with you has gotta go, and so be it. And so this will be my 10th use or my 10th attack and I get two so I will attack yep. once my okay. the, the special weapon you've concocted for me will activate its effect a taste for war and so mm-hmm. after the 10 stacks all targets including myself in a 40 foot radius take my current HP and fire damage and they can't resist it they can they can attempt to take half mm-hmm. so, so I'm going to take my first attack to reach 10 so at least getting one more swing in okay go ahead he misses his spade. So, I mean, that's a 30 or something. <laughs> that's what? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, you roll real high. Oh, wait, you said he missed also? I said he missed his spade. Yeah, his counter attack. <laughs> I will repost also. Okay. Um, so, I, I will, so I hit with my... Re- I'll take my reaction. You, what? I'm sorry. What is repost? Repost is reacting, right? Yes. Yeah, you can't yeah. take that on your turn. Oh. Well, yeah, react to a reaction. Daddy tried. Daddy yeah, you tried. Can't re- yeah, you can't do a reaction on your turn. Because well, during your opponent's the, turn. the spade was reacting to Atlas's attack you, in the first place. He can't you, react to the reaction. It's it's Davenport. It's a six point six edition. D and D. That is twelve damage. Yeah. Okay. You're real good. You hit him real good. Um. So yeah, you you like bring down and here's here's. Uh, mechanically how it works, not mechanically thematically, you bring down this axe and you cut deep through his chest and you watch like blood spurtle, this dark corrupted ink, and it hits the ground and you watch the spider cracks go and then your effect triggers and uh, what is the save he has to make? Uh, He has to make a dexterity save Uh, I don't know that he's good at this uh, well, it's not great. Uh, nope, he fails because I don't think a five beats anything. I don't remember what the save was. You said it was fifteen or something like that. The save is seventeen. Oh yeah, he fails. Hard fail. Um, so he's going to take forty-one fire damage. Now you have to roll that save too. Yes. So you don't die a fiery death. Question: I have the effect that allows me to roll advantage on on, on uh, deck saves of, the, of effects that I can see. You can see it coming. So, you're the cause of it. I'm just gonna. I'm just wondering. I mean, good good ask, but 100. percent So you're saying I do get it? I can't have advantage. You can have advantage. Cool, I didn't, I was very much. That's a 19. In the know. Yeah, I was very much in the know when I designed that weapon. Like. It's meant to be uh, dangerous, but as long as you're like you and not wearing heavy armor, you're okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, when you hit, there's this explosion of lightning and fire that radiates out from your weapon. And you kind of watch as like Yarg, you can kind of see his form in the fire at first, like as it's burning away at your skin. And, and like, it's not nearly as bad for you because of the armor, it still hurts like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. But, like, you can just watch as Yarg is just slowly turned to the skeletal frame. And, like, his, like, um, his, like, flesh is, like, melting off the bones and kind of falling down. And, um, you kind of see him crumple and fall. 
and the only thing that's left of him is like melted armor, um, but still a very real, very sturdy spade. The original, non-corrupted. Um, and Devin as or Atlas as um, this fire washes over you and the pain just sears in your face. You have a vision. You, you're standing tall and proud and you're almost like walking on this translucent floor. Like it's almost like darkness or stars. It's like you're walking on a night sky. And as you're like looking through these fresh eyes, you kind of, you're almost like on autopilot, right? You're not you, but you're you. And, and you kind of see through your eyes, your arms and hands. They are as they are now they're covered in molten armor and just like rock substance as you climb up onto this throne and you sit and you look across to see when and you to your left you see a like a dark figure that is humanoid and you know it's Ryle and you can see Sinlor and you can see Aya and you say, or you hear yourself say, in a much deeper voice than your own, why have you brought me here then? And you kind of wake up. Like you, you're, you're back and, and you're snapped and you realize you've ju- you just killed Yarg and your friends are in danger. Uh, no, it will... Yeah, I'm gonna run. I'm just gonna run to them. That's next thing. Yeah. I gotta get to him. Yeah, cool. Um, so you're gonna come in bottom of the lineup, but stop. Shane, welcome to the podcast. It's time hey. to roll initiative. Let's do this shit. Ooh. That's what Daddy likes. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. It's very good. It's real good. Well, I got a dexterity bump off that last level too. Maybe uh, it's just me. That's a dirty twenty. Ooh. Star, how we doing? It's fifteen, which is not the best I can do. All right. Ooh, I think she. Yep. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Um, and I just want to remind everybody that the evil elf here is Dragon Bait's NPC. She's yeah, the one who brought is... it in. She's Sybil Dragon Bait. That is her name, her name. She's got a cool name, right? Sybil Dragon Bait. Oh, name. that's her name. Oh, last name Dragon. Nice. Yep, that that was what she requested. <laughs> All right. Oh, well. Go take All her down. Then. So, um, you guys kind of get in that combat mode and you can hear Atlas like in the distance like a hundred feet back as you got as the corruption happens um and you have Frost standing five feet in front of Sybil and you guys are oh um 60 feet back is I think I think as far as you got yeah Yeah, Yeah. because well I know for sure Kristoff is because he ran up into telekinesis um, so he's 60 feet and I'll, I'll say unless you want to say differently Star uh, that um, Ezreal is 10 feet behind him unless you want to be right next 10 That's feet to you. behind is fine okay yeah. <laughs> you take that hit my dude uh, <laughs> you're gonna want to be yeah, first, bad things are about to happen uh, to Chris <laughs> well yeah first, uh, first up is the corrupted frost and you kind of see this sunken, like very hollow, like uh, form that uh, of frost, and he kind of like shan like uh, shambles forward five feet, and he raises up his right hand, and you kind of see him kind of struggling with like his very actions, and then you see like this thin green ray like spark forward towards you and I need you to make a dexterity saving for Kristoff. Yeah. 
Uh, 16. You son of a bitch. Okay. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I have a feeling that meat. <laughs> um, so this green line, like, you're able to, like, move out of the way, but you can, you can, like, feel the very corruption off of that line, and it kind of sails into the darkness, almost like Atlas is, like, running forward and has to, like, do a duck, too. Like, oh, shit. Um, but unfortunately, that's about all my boy can do this turn. Save or suck, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, next up is Kristoff. I need to mark that. Uh, I'm going to retroactively just uh, throw a little flavor onto my spell. Uh, so as I roll up here and I see this scenario and I see Frost get kind of uh, smacked with the, uh, the no-no beam, I... Um, I start chanting and I and I and I start to twist my hands in water forms and it comes around my brow, uh, up and around and it becomes this this small crown of, of frost with like a a light blue um, sapphire ice crystal in the front which I, I hold with my hand uh, with my left hand and I reach out my right hand um, to use this telekinesis spell and I bring. The, um, the the wand of frost this this um, this shard artifact uh, to my hand which I'm immediately going to turn and grab my uh, my staff that I've taken with me from the basement of uh, Prima Tacit, and I'm going to kind of just slam that uh, ice shard onto the staff and just use some frost to kind of fix it at the end like some sort of um, frozen magical spear. Okay. Um, roll me an intelligence saving throw with okay. disadvantage. Groovy. That's really natural 20 and an 18. Uh, I have a plus zero. Okay. So, first and foremost, thank you, Lawful Stupid. Dog. I want you to go ahead and write this down. You have dead. <laughs> you, yeah, dead. You have dead. Yeah. dead. You have finally used these two very powerful <clears throat> items successfully. And what you gain out of that is you can use that weapon, you or an ally, whoever, they don't have to be proficient in it, provided that you're conscious, right? And you can use that to make to make an attack using your spell casting modifier, you, yours, no matter who uses it, for four D twelve cold damage. Woo! Oh, are you saying Atlas can be a magic boy? If if Kristoff yeah. will let him. <laughs> His spell casting modifier is intelligence. No, his spellcasting modifier. No, I'm just, I'm saying, yeah. yeah. Like, for whatever reason, yeah. Atlas's personal spellcasting <laughs> yeah. modifier is a fighter's intelligence. Yeah, it wouldn't matter. My spellcasting modifier, you know, strength. <laughs> yeah, so strength, that's how I cast spells. Um, Clearly. So, yeah. So not only do you get that. Uh, th so this counts as a melee attack? It, it, no, it counts as a spell melee attack. So, like, a, ranged a spell melee attack. spell attack? Is, nope. is, it, is, it a, is a weapon attack? It, it is a, it, it, yes, it, well... Is he firing Technically, it is a or melee. Is he hitting people. He is using a melee spell attack, similar to like Green Flame Blade. You use okay. your spell casting modifier and proficiency to attack with it. Well, the, the reason why I ask is because, for exactly that reason, does it stack with Green Flame Blade? Am I making a melee weapon attack as part of the the? Action? Oh no, it's like or it's that it's its, is own, its own cast essentially. It's like if I cast like Shocking Grasp. It's like a melee. It's like a touch range. Yes. Yes, attack, that spell anybody attack. can use it okay. if they take it, right? Like, got it, got it, got it. That's, that's what I wanted to clarify. Yeah. So, like, Atlas can use that in place of his attack action. Sure. So it's not a spell, to be clear. It is an attack action. So he can use, so it, it stacks with extra attack. Yes. So then it would stack with, like, Booming Blade. No, no, because it's not a, it's not a weapon attack. It's an attack action. So he could do an attack action with that and then make a second attack with his axe. Okay. Like, I don't want to make it any more complex. Yeah. I got it. Um, so on top of that, you're going to, in a minute, get some temp HP. Okay? 
<laughs> before you give that temp HP. You're going to go ahead and take 32 necrotic damage. Cool. Now, for your temp HP that you're going to receive, I need you to roll 3d10 plus 10. I have that in 8d10. Hooray. That's amazing. Uh, 10, 9, 4 is 23. Plus 10 33. is 33. So you, you basically... Almost almost <laughs> evened out. Yeah, you got one extra out of that. Um, so that's what you did. Uh, you fused those two weapons together. Uh, for my bonus action, I would like to... Do, I, do, the, do the individual features of this weapon still do yes. the thing? Okay. Then... I've got telekinesis up, that's concentration. Do you need to concentrate on it now that it's affixed to the rod? Uh, the concentration lets me repeat that effect every oh, turn. Okay. I can target a different item or creature. Um, so yes, it's still active. I think the best thing for me to do is I will, as a bonus action, um, and I'm not going to use the effect of the shard, I'm going to um, just do sorcery points to metamagic quicken spell a chromatic orb okay. at, um, how far away, are, are they the same distance away, the elf lady and... Uh, the elf lady is uh, 10 feet behind uh, the corrupted frost. Oh, it's got a range of 90 feet, so I could bump her. Um, oh, man, I do not know. I do not know on this one. Uh, can you can you set the stage real quick? Can you tell me my environment? Yeah, so you guys are standing facing this open door with like this um, swirling energy behind them, this portal to this other world. And you have Sybil, who's standing tall and just this like smirk on her face, like ready to slay you as you've already like spoiled her plans several times. And you have a corrupted yard who's like sunken in and, and almost like you can frost. tell there's an internal stru- yeah, uh, sorry, frost. Um, it, there's like this internal struggle to like move and fight. And there's this big, and you're on a, another long bridge. Um, it's like 20 feet wide. I think that's what we set the stage for last time. I apologize if there's a continuity error there. Um, in my head, it's just a big bridge. Um, and darkness meets each other, each side of the bridge. And further down is you guys. And then past that is Atlas, like running full speed choo choo train towards you guys with the archway at his back. Cool. I'm going to go for uh, Sybil then. All right. And that's an arranged attack, right? Can you spell that? It is. Okay. Um, roll the 16. And then my spell attack is plus two because I've got the thing. So that's plus 10. So yeah, we're going to say we're going to say that hits. Okay. And I'm choosing cold. Um, for my chromatic orb, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to point this this newfound spear, and just this this ball of ice energy starts to coalesce right at the tip of it, and I just pew, fire it off, um, and it's going to do uh, eight, 13, 16. thirty damage, thirty points of cold damage. Ooh boy! Yeah, so you fire this chromatic orb. And this almost like um, large beach ball sized bolt of ice flies across, leaving like trails of ice and wisp of cold, like wind, as like Yarg kind of like shanters. Frost. Frost. Um, he like kind of stumbles to the left. Avia. 
Alaria. Alaria. Hey, and, yeah. Alaria. Um, Strike and you see Sybil not even see it coming in time and just takes the hit and you watch ice and snow just kind of pour past her as it like drenches her and then fully engulfs her chest and she roars out in pain. <laughs> and do you have anything else? No, it's my turn. Your turn. Okay. Uh, next up is gonna. I, I believe the last the last cool thing I said to her was I'm gonna get you a new fucking bracelet. Um... <laughs> I, I don't remember. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I think that's from last episode. So if I didn't say that last episode, I'm gonna get you a new fucking bracelet. Okay. Um, I think I said that. So uh, yeah, now it is uh, Sybil's turn, um, and she is going to um, move forty feet forward. Now twenty feet away from you, and she is going to uh, raise up her offhand. The one not holding the scythe. And you kind of see it glow this, like, void color. These, this, not even black, just the absence of light around her hand. And you kind of start feeling this, like, tightness up across your throat. And I- Counterspell. Oh, okay. What does Counterspell do? It, counters- it stops the spell that's being cast. D- one reaction, uh, you attempt to interrupt a creature in the process of casting a spell. The creature is casting a spell of third level or higher. The spell uh, fails and has no effect. If it's fourth level or, or if the spell is third level or lower, it fails and has no effect. If it's creating it casting a spell fourth level or higher, make an ability check using your spell casting ability. DC equals ten plus spell's level. Okay, roll me a check. Nineteen. You succeed. So um, you use your reaction to. Um, like counter this spell. Uh, why don't you describe how what that looks like for you? So basically, what what I'm going to do is is um, I'm going to take my one hand off off this new spear, and basically, as she starts making these arcane gestures, these somatic components, I'm mirroring them as best as I can, trying to do it on the fly with a spell that I don't know. And as she goes to unleash this spell, basically, this it's almost like these um, these geometric shapes. It's like a square inside of a triangle, inside of a circle, um, kind of comes out this 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 counter, almost mathematical. Um, ball of disruption that's gonna kind of meet her spell midway and just uh, dissipate and so uh, when you do that you kind of like feel this like tight like almost like this crunching sensation on your hand like you don't take damage but you can feel like like that was like a rough cast and had you not been mm-hmm. like magically beefed up that might have actually hurt um, and so that's where we're gonna end this episode. <laughs> oh, we don't even get to my turn. Unfortunately, no. We're at time, and so everybody's tracking at home. Next up will be Ezreal. Yay! And that's where we'll pick back up. Sorry, there's no way we, we were gonna fit this final fight showdown meet at the doors scenario in one episode not to do it justice <sighs> Ooh, it is what it is it's pretty uh it's getting it's getting it's getting kind of heavy it's getting it's getting, it's getting kind of, we're in the end game now <laughs> it's intense um it's super when, uh, whatever it takes Dwayne, real quick when did this episode air uh this is july still i think all episodes after this will be uh august because okay. I'm looking at so, my um, tracker and we got one more roll of humanity at least. Okay. One, one roll for humanity here. This is going to be for the Michael J. Fox Foundation to combat Parkinson's. Uh, just a reminder that I messed up last month and it was Smile Train. And I said it was Michael J. Fox. I'm a big goober. This month actually is Michael J. Fox. So. 14. 14 dollars. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, you know, ah, I'm gonna lost for words right now because I'm real, real excited. Hey, uh, endless bag of dice, lawful stupid, go get them. Uh, you get a free month on your endless bag of dice shipped right to your door. Uh, Audible, 
Go to audibletrial.com slash lawful stupid. Get a free audiobook of your choice. And thank you so much for all your love and support. <laughs> um, no one has used the hashtag stupidcast since last we recorded, so I don't have to sing anybody's name or a song uh, about them and their champions. But gosh, if you wanted to, we're coming close to finale time, and how cool would it be if during the finale of Lawful Stupid, I had to sing your t- Twitter handle, whatever the hell is. <laughs> just in the uh, middle of the fight, just as you're casting. You just just like. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what we're gonna do. Somebody call Bonerfucker eight three two. That's assuming that's what your Twitter handle is. Bonerfucker eight cool. three two. Sorry. That guy. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> you know, as always. Till next time. We love you. Bye. 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 <laughs>